Jaguars training camp day three officially in the books. I'm Jamal St. Cyr alongside Justin Barney. Justin, today, like, hottest day of camp so far, but, and it's not close. Uh, they, they keep extending practice, adding more and more team drills. Uh, very competitive practice today. Um, a lot of 11 on 11, mm -hmm. a lot of 7 on 7. We saw some good throws, but some good plays by the offense and the defense. So Yeah, so I, I thought a, a well-rounded practice for both offense and defense today. Receivers, we've kind of been on them throughout camp. They've been my MVP yeah. yesterday and today. I thought, and again, another good showing by the offensive unit and receivers, but also some good plays defensively. I thought today right. was the most balanced day of camp for both sides of the ball. Very competitive. I spent a lot of time hanging out by the big guys. I, mm -hmm. I hung out by the offensive line and defensive line. So a couple of uh, key looks there. Luke Fortner getting coached up a lot. Mm -hmm. Luckily, he has a really good offensive line coach, and he lines up right next to Brandon Sheriff, who can yep. help him along there. Um, I think it's going to be good that they're going to put Tyler Shatley on the other side, right. another guy who's experienced playing center, been in the league a while. So Fortner, while he is a rookie and is going to make some, eh, have some growing pains, right. uh, he has some veteran guys around him who are making sure that the rookie can get in line. And it's good to, to see that progress because I've seen Casey McDermott at center, right. and he has struggled uh, this, this week with high, high snaps. snaps. Yeah. Um, he fell on the ground today uh, and got yelled at by the coaches. I don't think coaches want those guys hitting the ground for no. NFLPA kind of fine purposes. No one risk it. Not two years in a row. Too, too, uh, too physical and, <laughs> and get knocked down. So um, the progression of Luke Fortner, I think, is big for this for this team. And he's got that experience. I mean, offensive line was that unit last year where they weren't bad, but they weren't good. They were just the definition of average. Right. You add a Brandon in there, you add some stability, you get Cam back at left tackle, he is an above average left mm -hmm. tackle, and then you add Luke Fortner in there, which they need to replace Brandon Linder, something right. fierce. It, you know, Linder, boy, he did have injury issues. He was consistent. He was he there. Did, he you was knew for consistent. year after you year, year you were going to get. Were, get with him. So yes. it's nice to see Fortner getting those reps with the ones mm -hmm. and kind of ingratiating himself into that that offensive line rotation. And one thing I kind of took away from watching the defensive line group, their nickel package, they're already kind of getting there. So uh, on that defense at, on the front, they're going to put Smoot and Key on the inside with Walker and Allen outside mm -hmm. them. Kind of what we expected, but it's nice to finally see it on the grass right. and and start to progress. That could be a very fierce pass rush. We know what Dewan Smoot mm -hmm. can do. We know what Josh Allen can do. Uh, Arden Key had a good year in San Francisco, right. so if he can duplicate that, all of a sudden this nickel pass rush is going to look pretty good. For right, and, and if, you know, for listeners of our post-free agency News for Jags podcast, Arden Key was one of my guys that yeah, I really right. liked what he had done. I liked it. It's kind of a sneaky free agent signing. To me, it's almost like that Evan Ingram high, you know, high risk, high reward kind of high signing. Reward, yep. um, you know, Ingram has struggled with the drop. Arden Key, unfulfilled potential, kind of been, you know, waiting for him to take that next step. Mm -hmm. He did last year, and I think he's a very good rotational piece on that defensive line. All right, and your MVP for today is actually coming from the defense, right? That's right. So it's my first one of the camps so far where I'm going to shift to the defense. You know, first day I went with the facilities here at the Knight Complex at Episcopal. Just beautiful facilities here. Yes, I went with Trevor and the receivers. Right. Trevor's been phenomenal as advertised. Today, I'm going to go on the other side of the ball, Tyson Campbell. Good pass breakup, a couple pass breakups. Very against, nice day. Against, uh, against Trevor today in the number ones. Uh, one of his plays, I think he finished with, uh, there was a play towards the sideline. Tyson broke it up. And he said, just like Chick-fil-A on Sunday. So that was a great <laughs> line there oh, for all great. you non-Chick-fil-A fans are closed on Sunday. <laughs> so Chick-fil-A closed on Sunday. There's no passes his way today. So That's Tyson, Campbell, no, is Tyson Campbell has been having a great camp. He's given up a few catches, but he's mm -hmm. always been really sticky in coverage right. right there. You know, early in camp is definitely geared toward the offense to have the advantage. But Tyson Campbell's still showing that he's picking up where he right. left off last season. My guy's coming from the other side of the ball. I'm going back to the wide receiver group today. I want my MVP to be Zay Jones. Now, look, Zay Jones made a ridiculous play. Right. Uh, they were going 11 on 11. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence looking deep. And he, uh, we've seen this consistently, him going off play action to Zay Jones. This one, the defense looked like they had sniffed out. Shaquille Griffin and Rayshon Jenkins both yeah. there. But Zay just makes a crazy play, able to undercut both guys, make the play on the ball, and left Rayshon Jenkins just kind of sitting yeah, on the ground. Yeah, and it was set. a massively deep thrown ball, too. No yeah. cover, corner help, all alone with the safety. Great great Not a great throw from Trevor, but a great play by Zay Jones. At, caps off to him. Uh, by far the play of the day out here. Yes. Um, and he got in the end zone and definitely let the defense know that he had made the play. <laughs> so uh, Zay Jones, my MVP for today. He's quietly been a guy who's building up mm -hmm. steam, having a very good camp along with some of these other receivers. We'll have to see just how 
he looks once the pads go on, but it, it's pretty clear that he's going to be one of the top receivers that they depend on this season. Right, and, you know, it's with the 11 and, and 7 on kind of thing, it's geared for the offensive guys. Yeah. So it will be interesting to see. Yeah, the receivers, we've kind of raved about them the first three days. We of really camp. have. I mean, there have been Laquan Treadwell has had some great catches. Evan Ingram had a fantastic catch over the middle today and a sideline grab. He and my guy, Lawan Winningham. Lawan Winningham. Um, you know, so there have been guys. At La- Laquan Treadwell, the first day of camp, had an unbelievable catch on the sideline. Yep. One of my top catches of camp. So there has been some great performances by yep. a maligned group of receivers last year. Yep. But it will be interesting because – you know, 11 and 7 tend to favor the quarterback, the, 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 the receiver, the skill position guys, because it's not that contact. You, right. you tap to break right. a, a pass up or tackle. So it will be interesting Sunday when those passes come on, the live bullets start flying, mm-hmm. to see how much progression these receivers, the tight ends, have truly made in the offseason. That's right. And we'll keep an eye on all of that and keep you up to date with our updates as they keep rolling. Make sure you check out newsforjacks.com underneath that sports section for the rest of the camp updates. For now, I'm Jamal St. Cyr, and this is Justin Barney, and we'll see you next time.